the phone. Welcome back. Nana here. And, uh, uh, we are into a, a new session. <coughs> uh, this is called Dropship Without GOB. So the business process has undergone a change. So we are going to see about how the change has uh, got affected in this one now, right, on 21A. So let me go on and share my screen and then I'm going to see the Dropship Without GOB. So before I begin, uh, uh, a small amount of marketing now. I'm now setting my records at this website, oraclenona.com. The biggest advantage of uh, learning from me is uh, I will be assisting you if you're getting struck at. So we will come on a Zoom conferencing and then I will now clarify your doubts if anywhere you are struck now. Apart from that, I have got around 500 strong uh, participants in my Telegram group. So I will now add you over here and then you can even discuss with them uh, whatever problems you are having. <clears throat> So some of them will now give you a solution for you. So that will be of a great help for you for uh, uh, getting a resolution for all your issues on the field also. So here you can see this now and then you can see what all it is containing in my site actually. If you go to the SCM agenda page, you can now see. So there are 12 of my records are there. <clears throat> so these are all my teaching actually. You'll be getting both the documents and records for this one. And then apart from that, you'll be getting other documents and records also. Eight more of this also coming. So you'll be getting totally 20 records of records for you. So this will be costing you 20k. So you can even uh, make a click on the pay button and then uh, make a payment using your debit card or a credit card or net banking, whatever is convenient. And if you are from abroad, you can even use the PayPal now. So you can pay. So the cost is 10k in the INR actually. <clears throat> and then you can even uh, click on the click here for the agenda for the individual modules on this place on the SCM agenda page actually. If you click on it, you can now see the detailed agenda. Compare it. And then uh, if you have any specific expectations on your this thing, so go through this agenda and then it will now give you a full idea about what exactly I'm covering. And then, uh, so your expectations can be freezed basically before you buy. So in fact, what happens, I'm one of the best traders in the world who will be covering the subject with such a great depth. <clears throat> then we have one of the guy who is here, one Akash Nikam is there. Akash, can you put a few words about me? <clears throat> How do you feel my records? This is now getting recorded also. Yes, sir. Uh, so please let me know if I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you're audible actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm very thankful to Nana sir. I have uh, purchased all all his material and have gone through many EBS as well as cloud cloud training uh, in, in HCM modules. So it has really helped me a lot in getting the in depth understanding of the product. And I have also tracked uh, many interviews. I have actually worked working as a technical. And I have uh, thought to move into functional and it has really given me a, a good insight of the whole product functionality. So I'm really thankful to Nana sir. Uh, you are doing a great, great work. Thank you so much sir. Thank you, thank you Akash. So uh, you will definitely be getting a very good amount of it. It is a, definitely the money is worth actually. Not that I'm now selling a record. I'm now selling a career for you. So you can go to my uh, oraclenow.com and then Think of buying it now. Okay, now let's come to the present day subject. Day subject. <clears throat> so here, the dropship without uh, GOP. Now let me log in now. I want to install this one. So let me go inside. So here, let me go and create a sales order. I go to the order management and then I'm going to create a sales order. And then I'm going to demonstrate to you about how to make a dropship. Before I make a dropship, I will now explain you what exactly the process. Let us say I'm the Maruti car dealer and I have two cars in my showroom. Suddenly a customer is coming to my showroom and then asking for five cars. So what I will do is I will now sell the two cars and then I will now make a dropship order for the remaining three cars on the manufacturer Maruti with you. So Maruti Udyog is a manufacturer. And so I will be making a sales order on Maruti Udyog. Fine, go there. Uh, rather, the, the, the sale will be for the customers, but I will now make a drop ship order on Maruti Udyog. So Maruti Udyog will now ship it to the customers directly. And then once when it is shipped, I will now be billing the customer actually. For the three cars, I will be billing it. So this is how the drop ship works. Akash is clear, no? This is a way of drop ship. And I'm yeah, again, and then I'm now going to place 
what happens is sales order on my customer only but i will now make a drop ship order on maruti udyog my manufacturer actually so maruti udyog will be shipping to the customers and then they will not be having any other relationship other than the shipping of the uh, material actually and then i only will bill and then i only will give a warranty and then i will now give after sales support everything i will give as a dealer actually so let us go there and see top and other products no popular customer over here now computer services and then some popularity get i am working on a vision one now so and everything is there and go that to connect i will put as 65001 an item over here now so i am now picking up the vision item over here i will now go for three quantities over here and then click on add now so the line gets added to the sales order now so afterwards i go to the left hand side and then click on the shipments now and click on the shipments and then i go to the supply line so here since it is a drop ship order i will be putting the supplier directly over there abc over there i will open the abc consulting <coughs> and then drop it down i will open the site as a us one site and that's it i know that sales order is ready for doing it now i know that's one site so i am now going to submit the sales order <coughs> i will open up a notepad also remember the number of my kids 97 <coughs> 382 this is over now let me submit it submitting is nothing but a customer's confirmation customer is confirmed that he is going to buy now so based upon his confirmation we are now going to submit it now i click on submit so 97370 is in a draft stage so the moment you submit it it will now go through if there is an approval it will now go via approval now approval is bypassed and so what happens it will go into processing so abc consulting is a man who is going to supply it. now it's not approved it is not actually there so it will now be there only momentarily and then it will now go to the processing i'll now go to the actions and then go to switch to fulfillment module so let me go to the fulfillment module and then go to the fulfillment lines now and then how to correct and then we go there and then click on it click on the do number now the distributed order orchestration number i'm going to click on it now and then it will be showing over how it is going to work so here the scheduling has failed actually if you see scheduling has started but the x mark has come i will now click on the x mark and then have a look at it now. so go to the space and if you go there the first line it is now giving you some blah blah and then if you go to the second line it shows you clearly that auto scheduling has failed actually so this was not the case Be previously we used to do this drop ship directly now there is a small change on the process actually so for which what they say is i will now take up the do number over here now right this is another the error number now so let me take up the error number now. so it says auto scheduling as well attribute supplier id has invalid value so these are all uh, technical team has uh, picked up something 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 some junk has come over here now i don't really know because here the gop has to be set for even a non gop also that is what they saying uh, gop has to be partially set that is what they saying so okay now so you take a value of this time so let's call it let us now go to the metallic now <clears throat> and then there the log query on it take over the log query on it so i will now paste this number and then query on it to find you this is a number error number now click on it so once when i query it will be getting a lot of information here you can see drop ship order scheduling fails with attribute supplier id has invalid value that's also right right click on the open up in a new tab now so now going it so error has occurred so the error also occurs if the supplier is manually provided on sales order and then here we are not have made the sourcing rules and assignments that has to be done that what is saying so we have to create a sourcing rule for this and then make an assignments at all and this will be saying because of it is not so he has given a procedure and then based upon the procedure i have already done it now and i will now show you where exactly i have done it so i will now go to some other instance now find out this instance so let me open up and then go to some other instance now <clears throat> so there i have done it actually so here i go there i will now go to the order management and then i will go to the gop area so go to the gop area so it says that the sourcing rule has to be created i have done it so let me correct i will now go to this place manage sourcing rules and then i have created a sourcing rule for this one a01 and then i will now make a search for it and then i will now say it's a drop ship by actually okay for it i now edit it So it's normally a global one now. Right? Whenever you're going to buy, it will be a global one. So it's a global sourcing rule. Right? Go there, and then you buy from, and then I will now give a supplier also. A zero one sub one. I have given it now at this site. Hundred percent allocation is going to be. So yeah, this thing has been done now. 
and then it has to be put into the assignment set actually and we are, after having created the sourcing rule we have to do the buying sourcing rule 100% and then we have to put it in the assignment set and cancel it now so let us now go there and then look at the assignment set actually go to set up amendments let us now go to the admin profiles and then have a look at our assignment set actually click on it go there so go to the search so manage admin profiles So manage admin profile is the one. Go there. Manage administration profile values. Go there. And then here it is the MSP percentage default percentage. That is the profile name. No fine. Click on it. No more than that. So it is now pointing to what? No, how will it come back? Got it. So it is now pointing to what? This is the value. Flinto Duo. So in this assignment set, I have inserted my sourcing rule actually. In this assignment set, I have already. So we are we are using the Flinto Duo. I know that's one cancel now. So this profile, it is the MSP default assignment set of the one. I know so again showing you MSP default assignment set now. So it is called MSP default assignment set is the profile value. So the profile at the site level has got this value. So Flint to do. So let me go and then query this assignment set. Cancel it. Click on done now. Let us now go there. So go to the home page on and then go to the order management and then go to the GOP again. And then here we go there. <coughs> go to this place. And then here I will now go to the manage assignments. So let me query the Flinto do do now. Flinto do I am going to query it. I am going to click on it. So there are plenty of assignments are there. Let me go and query on this now. I am going to click on it. So let me go and query on this. What's called? It should not be at the item level at all. That is what he is saying. Right? You have a look at it now. So when you are doing it, we can do the assignment at any other level, but not at the org level. Sorry, not the org level. So go there. Add a line to the assignment set for your global sourcing rule at an appropriate length that does not include R. Fine, that does not include R. So I have now made an assignment at the item level actually. At the item level, I have made an assignment of this one. So I will now go and then how go to it. So go there. So at the item level, I'll now query it. So it's the A0101 is the one. I know click on enter. <coughs> that is the item which I'm going to use now for this exercise. I know that's correct. So at the item level, I have an assignment set. So it is the A01 dropship level. So I have created a sourcing rule and then I have inserted it at a, not at any other, uh, if you give a plus, now fine, that says what, there are multiple levels there. Do not do anything at the org level. I have a problem that I can choose now. Item or don't use it now. Organization, category, organization, all these things, don't use it. Anything which is org level, don't use it. Then what it is saying, the doctor says now. So I have done at the item level. At the item level, I have an assignment set. The assignment set is created. And then this is my default profile actually at the admin level. And then I have gone to the assignment set and then added it now. So after having done this, no, fine, no assigned over there, no, fine, the cancel. So having done these two things, fine. Creating an assignment, a sourcing rule, and then assigning it to my assignment set, pointed to my MSP, MSP default. Then I, what I did is I went to the, uh, what's called, go there. <clears throat> I have already done it, so I'm just showing you what I've done. No, fine, that for, go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs now. So in the plan inputs, I go there. And then I go to the correct planning data. I'm going to give it correct planning data. And then I have done it. Then go there. And then since I made only on the GOP level, what I collected is what? Only order orchestration reference object I collected. And then this is not a head change on a targeted manner. And on the supply side, nothing is there. So this will be very fast. So I made a collection of this. I did submit. Now I'm not going to submit because I already done it now. I'll cancel it. And then after having done this, what happens? I go to the ESS job. Enterprise scheduler services job, we go there, click on the schedule process, and then I ran the refresh and start global order policy. Go there, go there. The refresh percentage, start percentage, and then we have now. refresh and start global order policy. Go there. I ran it normally for all the parameters. And remember, you're doing it. So sometimes what happens, something uh, doesn't work at all. So you go there, you enable everything, and then what happens, you do it. That is a better way. Uh, because sometimes something doesn't work at all properly. It doesn't, it's not sensed by the GOP area at all. So like that, what happens, you go on and add it and then sense it. So having done both the things, I did the, what's called a restart, no point, it's log out and log in. Now, let us go on and get a sales order. And these two things are very important, actually. So this is a new addition when compared to the previous uh, releases, no point, from 21A onwards, we have to create a sourcing rule as well as uh, go for assignments. And then there, there is no necessary for the manage ATP rules actually. If you go on and see this, now they give only this one. 
fine. So create a assignment set fine. Go there, create a sourcing rule now, and then put it on the assignment set. Apply it assignment set. Then what is saying? And nothing else is required. And then, you know. So go there. So this one is not required. That is what it says actually. If you go to the order management and then go to the GOP. So here uh, there are three activities for the GOP. Manage ATP rules. It is not required. So manage sourcing rules and then manage assignment sets are only required for a thing which is without GOP. And then if you go to the manage ATP rules, you go there. Here nothing is required. And remember, normally when you are going by a GOP, the supply orchestration will fire and then it will be doing all the things. Fine. GOP has got three things. One is what back to back buy, back to back make, and then back to back transfer. For which the supply orchestration will work now. Now here for the drop ship without a GOP, the supply orchestration will not fire at all. So we are going to see this now. Fine. So you might have already attended the order management training, and so you must be proficient with all those things actually. So click on the order management, and then go to the order management, and then go to the order management, and then click on create order. I am not going to create an order now. <clears throat> so let me go and then create my order for the A zero one cast one. Now. So A zero one cast one is the one. I am not going to create now. So go there. I will now put the item fine A zero one zero one and make it happen. I will now go for three quantities for this one. And then click on add. So I go to this place and then here I go to the supply. And then in this place, I will now put the A01 sub one actually. Sub one one is not having a, a, a sourcing rules and assignment set. The remaining are not having it. Only this is only having it, so I'm not using it. I'm using it. So this one has got a sourcing rule as well as an assignment set entry in the GOP. Drop it down. Then choose the site. Now that's it. I go back to on it. Give we'll save. And then here I'm now going to submit it for one. 1035 is the sales order number. 10035. So let me submit it. So now once when you put the supplier and sell, this guy is now going to supply to my cust one now. He's now going to supply to customer. It is not being it will not be shipped from my arrows. So the supplier is now going to supply to my customers directly. So click on submit now. So the non-GOP area is now also being pulled into the GOP now, and there is a change. One zero zero three five five. Oh, okay now, <clears throat> and then here along go to the actions, and then go to the system fulfillment view, and then you go to the fulfillment lines, and then click on the do number now. Go further, and then click on the do number. Now it is now going to be changed now to fulfillment actions. If you go there, it will now go there. So click on refresh now. Find the reserve ship. Everything is coming, and click on refresh now. <clears throat> It will be getting changed to what procure and then invoice. Previously, something was there. After scheduling, it will be interface to what happens procurement. This interface is not via uh, your supply orchestration. Actually. It is not via supply orchestration. I can see it is not scheduled and then it will now say requisition created. Actually. So I will now right click and then duplicate now. I will now have a look at the supply orchestration over here now. So the supply orchestration gets figured for back to back buy, back to back make, and then back to back transfer now, but not for this drop ship without a GOP. So if you go there, requisition is now created. So if you go there, go to this place, and then go to the home icon, and then go to the supply <coughs> supply chain execution now. <coughs> Go there. I will now go to the supply orchestration area <clears throat> and then click on this. And then you go to the manage supply lines. So let me go and then query on this now. Right? A0101 underscore cost underscore test to drive. So you will not even find the item over here because item itself is not appearing on the supply, supply orchestration area. So it is not via supply orchestration. Supply orchestration will be triggered. For sales orders as well as a transfer orders now, right? And for some transfer, on the on, for the sales orders, it is for back to back make, back to back my, and then back to back transfer of all the things, and then transfer orders also will be triggered via the supply orchestration. But if you're going for a drop ship without a GOP, it will not be triggering at all. But with GOP also it will trigger. You can just watch my videos. So with GOP also it will trigger. But for without GOP, it will not trigger at all. And only thing is they have added over here now and orders. So click on refresh now. And now uh, what I did is I have already made uh, what's called the uh, blanket uh, 
blanket agreement, blanket purchase agreement. I already made it. No problem. Right now, I know. I will not go to the purchase order. I will have a look at the agreement. Click on it. I will not go to the manager agreements. <clears throat> and then I just made one agreement of a technical search. Now, I already made an agreement called two thousand three. Now, so two thousand three is an agreement. So let me go there and click on it. <clears throat> go to this place, and then here, if you see. So I have made a price of two actually. I made a price of two. <clears throat> so this is the price on which he is going to supply actually. And then uh, against which, what is it? If you go to the controls, so it is basically for what used customer sales order. So in the controls area, I have enabled it so that whenever a sales order comes in, what happens? It will be used. Now, right? You have to enable this tick mark policy. So go to the main one. <clears throat> So when the purchase order is now getting created, that will be going as a release to the blanket agreement for a normal one. But in case of this now, right? so here that is governed by the amount limit actually. Normal BPAs, uh, normal uh, say, uh, uh, normal SPOs, the standard purchase orders which are released against the BPA will be governed by the release amount. Now. But here it will not be a release at all. There will not be any release at all. So once when a drop ship order makes a SPO referencing the BPA, it is not at all a release. So we can even is a bindas one. We can release any amount. So it doesn't contribute to the release at all. Whereas for a normal one, when you're automating it by a BPA, that will be contributing to as a release amount. And then we can set the limits of release actually. Here there is no limit at all because the purchase is not governed by the purchasing department, but by the sales department. So they can sell anything, whatever they want. They can also sell infinity also. So there is no limit at all. And so. It will not be contributing to the release amount for this. That's it. Because of two price, two dollar price, not like that. So by this time, since I have already made it, you would have got one purchase order created referencing this two thousand three hundred. Thank you, Madam. Now go there and have a look at it. So you go to space, you go there. What are the manager orders? And then you know, give a search. We are given for three quantities, two dollars. It's for six dollars actually. You go there, click on it. Can I see? There is a purchase order for six dollars is open now. Right, three zero four three is the P one number. So three zero four three is the P one number. They go there, open it up, and then how? So it says what normally the inventory organization zero one the A zero one lock one is the built location as well as the ship location. But here he the supplier is not going to ship it to our org but to the customer's location actually. So if you see the I icon, it will say this is a third party location and not our. Inventory location at all, so it is the customer's location. He is going to ship it, so he will be shipping it to this place, and then by which the sales order gets completed. That is why it is not contributing towards the release of this two thousand three now. So uh, rather, it is not showing me. Uh, so I, I made a mistake. I think it is not referencing the sales agreement as two thousand one actually. Uh, one second, let me go and check the file. Not referencing the two thousand one actually. Uh, you know, go to the manage agreements and enter two thousand one now. I may be having an agreement on the supplier actually, so it's not referencing there actually. Yeah, that means what it is not going to contribute to the release. Actually. Click on the release. Actually. Release amount yeah, is contributing to the release. Actually. I was under the impression that it doesn't do that way. Now, right? I am wrong actually. So, since it was referencing 2001, we already have what year, what's called here. Yeah. On this supplier, we have it now. So, this too, it also shows that it is not for us now. So, goods to be shipped to a third party is also to be a third party. So they are contributing to us. And the ship location is also a not our location actually. So if you open it up and then see this now, it shows you clearly that the location is different, and then this is basically for a different purpose. Yeah, it's contributing to the release actually. So this is the ship location is coming there, and then the one. <coughs> so uh, three zero four three is now done. And then if you go to the schedules now, thank you for the schedules. And then here also you will be having a blue icon now. And if you click on it, you will have the information now. Click on it. Now the scheduled goods are to be shipped to a third party. Actually, not for us. So uh, now we are not supposed to receive it. Actually, we are not supposed to receive against three zero four three. If you try to go on and try to receive it, what happens? It will not be done. And then if you go to the manage orders, so it says what? Uh, uh, what is the one? Where is my sales order number now? Refresh it. Click on refresh now. So it is awaiting shipping. It has gone to awaiting shipping actually. After the schedule, it is going to awaiting shipping. So here 
the requisition is created. PO is also created. If you go to the fulfillment lines, probably it will not show you fine product. I don't put the supply in so fulfillment line supply is because that the drop ship is now coming over there now. So the drop ship PO number is coming. Fine. The requisition number is also coming. Three zero four three and the requisition number everything is coming also. The drop ship item. So it's basically a yeah, uh, drop ship without GOP. And then you now compare every details are coming up over there. <clears throat> the supply lines. Now let us now try to receive it. Now fine. We cannot receive it from three zero four three. We cannot receive it. Go to this place. We will not try to receive three zero four three. So we go to the supply chain execution, and then here we go to the inventory management, and then we'll know go and receive it. Click on it. So we'll now change it to receipts, and then three zero four three is the purchase of number. Receive expected shipments. So three zero four three, and then the tab, and then I will now make a search now for it. So I'm now searching; nothing is coming here. So purchase order is not entering out. Fine, it is there. Otherwise, what happens? The purchase order is invalid. It will not show you. I will not change the org also. It is a G zero one So org is G zero one one. Go there. So click on receive expected shipments on three zero four three. Search for G zero one one. It shows you nothing. So that means what? We cannot make a receipt. Whereas in EBS we can very well receive the dropship order can be received upon receipt into our inventory the sales order will now progresses to what shift actually here the the concept has been changed now so here we are not showing everything shipping so instead of doing it we have to make an AS and we have to make an AS because we are not physically receiving it so they made the they change the process over here now so we will go to the receipt area and then click on done now and now create an AS and for this the advanced shipment notice is more than sufficient for a Shipment by the by our supplier to the customer actually create an AS and okay, okay, yes. you go there and look query on the purchase order number point three zero four three zero one and what happened and then let me make a search for this now we are searching for it and select it and then click on create AS and now and then what is it I will not say it is a Nana underscore AS and underscore one zero two the number now the flight terms is what is the flight and the shipment method is what I will not drop it down. Number of supply tracking units is three. <coughs> bill of lading, right? We bill number. So all, nothing is mandatory actually. Right? Whatever is applicable for you, you give it. Otherwise, leave it blank. Oh, my entire weight is what thirty-four. Entire weight units of measures is kilograms. So fill up. When you fill up everything, what happens? It'll be giving a lot of value additions. So it's always preferable to fill up. The maximum information over here when you're getting a laser. And then I will now say it's a three quantities. I will not put all the three quantities when you go know, that And then I will now submit it. So the moment I submit it, the ASN gets created. Nana ASN 102 will be created. Right? This indicates that what our customer, our supplier has now supplied to the customer actually. So click on submit now. <clears throat> so you're going to submit it. So for this purchase order number, we are now submitting it. And remember the location is what A01, cust one and not lock one now. So was created, number of lines is there now. Now this automatically progresses the sales order to ship back. So keep on refresh now. So I'm refreshing it. So once we refresh it, it will be progressing it to ship capture. We'll now see whether any uh, ESS job runs or not. I'm not sure about it. I'm on it. So we'll now go and then go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process and then travel for it. Any ESS job is running now. I don't think anything, anything is running. It's along by some other people actually. So no ESS job is running upon ESN actually. You go to this place and then click on refresh now. It will be going to ship. Mandichi. We got it. So it will now become shipped. And then it will now, since the air is also fully shipped, it will be going to awaiting billing on the shop. It will be going to awaiting billing on the shop. Now, we are going to see about a return on this now. Fine. Now it is not awaiting billing actually. So I click on done. So go to the main area. We are now going to process the return for one quantity on this. So 135 is one. So the return has got enabled now. So we can, if you have got multiple lines, what you can do is you can return all, or return. So there's only one line. I'm doing it now. I'm not going to return only one quantity of this now. There are multiple ways of return. Either you can cancel the item or return for credit. If it is only for what's called a AR invoice only, a credit promo gets created. So by by which what happens? The customer's liability will be coming down actually. Or otherwise, return for credit and then return the item. 
So I will now use this option. So we'll now have an invent result as well as a credit promo being getting created on another product. So we are go there. I will now give a reason for this. So we can also populate the reason code via lookup actually. I will now say the item is damaged because of which the customer is returning it. We are now creating a return order on this. So 10035 and click on trade on. So it will now be creating a return on the one quantity. It will be coming in minus. So go there. So go to this place. The line is already populated. It says it is referencing 10035. So you go to this place, go to this place, where are you going to return it? So I will not say, uh, I will not go to the supply in which we are a warehouse. I'm going to be somewhere with a A010. Child dog, actually. I will not choose my child. The place where I'm going to return it, actually. So give a save, the number will be coming. So 10036 is my return order in the draft now. So here it shows me find what this find here. So if you click on it, if you click, there's a blue button in the override line, you can even override it also. You can now see the original order number is also shown over here. The 10036 is now having the original order number. Right click on something. So by which the order is now getting created, 10036 is now getting created, referencing the 10035. Now it says what required attribute barrows. You're given the barrows, right? Arrows has been given now. I give a save. <clears throat> so, go to actions and I'm going to validate now. I'm going to validate it actually. Line or row one is missing the required attribute arrows. Okay. So, here on the header level, we are giving it, and the line level, we have to give it. I think that's what it's asking for. So, drop it down. Drop it down. And then override the order line, and then we'll not provide the values. So, if you go to space, shipping method, all these things are there now. I'm going to supply. So, probably I might not have given it properly. I don't know what I have done, what is the mistake I've done. Now. Let me populate the arrows in this place. Child, I click on OK now. So, give a save and then again validate it. So line level, we are validated. I'm going to actually need to validate it. So, we're validating it now. So, there is no problem at all, friend. Click on the submit of this return order. 10036 is the return order. So, where Because I have not given the headline. Why it is not coming down? I don't know. <clears throat> so, we will now refresh it now. And then you go to the actions and then go to switch to fulfill on you. So, if you go to the returns now, and click on the returns, it will be coming on And then click on the do number for the return now. So, here, if you go there, and then go to the orchestration plan. So return result and then invoicing. So now started return activity has started now. So the order number is 10036, and then that is known as an RMA number actually. So it is now saying awaiting receiving. I'm going to go to this place. And then here we'll now go there. You go to the supply chain execution, then go to the inventory management, and then here I go there, open up and then drop it down and then make a result and then click on receive expected shipments as an RMA now. So the RMA number is 10036. 10036 is the one. Thank you on search. So the supplier is not given a defective one. And remember, I will not put the quantity as one now. And then here we have to make it on an expense inventory. Otherwise, our asset value will be going up now, right? So I have an expense inventory. So let us know. Bring it in the expense inventory because it's a damaged product. So we are going to repair it and then we may even send it, ship it back to the customers also. So I'm now putting it as a what? An expense supplement. Then click on create result. You're getting over. And click on submit. So the result gets created. This is called a delivery into the inventory, actually. So 10025 is the result number. But this does not automatically update your sales order. In the case of shipment, the moment you create an ASN that is updating the sales order. Here, when you make a result, when you make a return of an RMA now, RMA is not updating the sales order automatically. If you click on the first one, it will not do it. So it will be still in our waiting thing. So we have to run the concurrent to interface it to order entry actually. We have to run the concurrent. So let us now go to the home. And then here, I will now go to the what's called tools. And then I will the screen process. I will now run the concurrent for send the result confirmation. Send the person data. Read the person data will be happening. Send result confirmation. Can we go now? C-O-N percentage. Search now. Come on. Got it. Select and then click on OK now. 
So organization is what? A0. Uh, is a child or not? And then the source system is nothing but do actually. It's called fusion order orchestration and planning. Oracle fusion order orchestration planning is a source system. And then if you know the reserve number, you can put it otherwise leave it blank. And then for each and every uh, receipt into the inventory via RMA, it will be processed. The send receipt confirmation is only for RMA receipt confirmation back into the uh, calling application actually. So transmits receiving transaction to source systems actually. The source system is an order management. I'm leaving it blank. It will not process by the thank you for something wrong. So once when the concurrent gets completed, you can now say the sales order getting updated as delivered actually. <clears throat> so the sales order will be updating as or delivered now. Send receipt confirmation is not running. Wait, wait, it's not ready. It has now started running now. Go to the manage sales orders. And then you can now see momentarily it will be going to deliver now. Click on refresh now. It will be going to deliver. And then finally it will be awaiting billing. Awaiting billing actually. It is not delivered now. So then afterwards it will be going to awaiting billing. It will be creating a credit memo in AR actually. It's all fully set actually. So it will be getting a credit memo. So this is on what's called a yeah, <coughs> dropship without GOP. And then with RMA actually. So invoicing has just started. So it will only take some time. And then afterwards, what happens? It will be going to wedding billing actually. It is not delivered into the inventory. So the send receipt confirmation is responsible for communicating your inventory receipts for a sales order back into order entry actually. Now it is going to wedding billing. So this cycle gets completed. Akash, have you understood it now? Yes, sir, very much. I will definitely try this okay. the whole process. <laughs> yes, sir. Then, fine, yeah. That's fine. Any other questions from your side? Uh, so nothing as a problem, but uh, I know you are reachable and yeah. I will come back to you. I am uh, very much reachable. Uh, the biggest advantage of what happens are buying my records is what you can very well reach me. I have my mobile, and then if I'm busy, I will know, call you afterwards. And then if you're still having a problem, we will be basically discussing about it on the Zoom conferencing like this. And I have solved many problems for many people now. So you will be having a very bright career if you are learning it through me. Best wishes. Bye for now. And then we'll meet on some other video. Bye.